I'm going to speak primarily on a particular subject which should be dear to all of us. The African origin of Christianity. I know some of you have gone to church today and the Jesus that you saw, Michelangelo's cousin, <laughs> having nothing at all to do with Jesus or Christianity. And most of you, if not all of you, have the same Jesus in your house. It put me in mind of a picture that is bothering me all the time. And I see in most of your homes, the KKK. Kennedy, King, and Kennedy. <laughs> and I know that you will no more, long, no more get rid of that picture than you would of Martin, I mean, uh, Michelangelo's cousin. But just as I can't understand you having a picture of the two Kennedy brothers, both of whom one ordered the bugging of Martin Luther King's phone, the other carrying it through. I cannot see you having that as a treasured picture. No more so than I can see you continuing if you in fact know that the first white Jesus was not painted until 16, 1509 by Michelangelo for Pope Julius II. So that if you think for one moment and your stained glass windows that that white man with the blue eyes and the blonde hair has anything at all to do with Jesus, then I say if you still, in fact, in, in spite of knowing it, continue and will next Sunday go and look at the same thing, then I know something is wrong. When I say African people, that we are African people and I dress you as such, some of you may have had consternation and constipation, both of them. But let me make that clear to see what extent I am correct. It was not too long ago before we stopped calling ourselves and our institution African. We still have the African Methodist Episcopal Church. For example, and we still have organizations and institutions calling themselves African. But for those of you who have doubt when you look in the mirror as to whether or not you're an African, and I know some of us have problem with it, then I ask you to look at the little parable about the rabbit. If you saw a rabbit go into an oven, of course I'm hoping that the oven is off, and the next day you go and look at the rabbit and you notice there were small ones, I am sure that you will not call anyone and say the rabbits had biscuits solely because they were born in an oven. <laughs> and if African people were brought to the Western Hemisphere, the United States of America in particular, and then they got young ones, I am sure that the young ones aren't colored Negroes, niggers, jigaboos, and goats or spooks. <laughs> They're still Africans. And if that is not sufficient for you, then you'll have to find your own analysis. But why is it so difficult that a subject such as this must come on this afternoon, this late date in our history? It is because we, our minds have been suppressed by most of those who control us on Sunday afternoons and other such times in the name of the Lord. And they themselves haven't been controlled because in the centers of theology, it is the white Christian, the white, and I hate to use the word Christian with respect to white quote-unquote brothers, if they are such things. My brother doesn't mistreat me. But let us first start, as I said from the beginning, where did the story of Jesus start? It started 4,100 years before Jesus. It started with the story of Isis and who became pregnant by an immaculate conception gave birth to her son Horus by a virgin birth. Horus, who at the age of 12, removed himself from his population and went further south into Egypt at the Grand Lodge of Luxor. At the age of 30, he returned, and at the age of 33, he was murdered, cut up into four, uh, 14 pieces, and so on and so on. 
If you look in what is called the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Papyrus of Annie, you will see the same story. If you go to Egypt today, and by the way, Egypt is in Africa the last time I looked at it on June and January the 9th, <laughs> unless it took a 747 and flew away. <laughs> but if you should go to Egypt at a place called Abydos, there is a temple there, still there, partially in ruins. The temple of the Pharaoh Seti One, S-E-T-I-1. And there you will see, not only in the hieroglyphic writing that the ancient Africans wrote, but you will also see the picture form the Africans painted, they drew the entire story of the Immaculate Conception and the Virgin Birth story. That temple was completed by, by Seti One's son, Ramesses II. Ramesses II took over in 1298 before the Christian era, B.C., after the death of his father, Seti One. You will see at another place, at a temple for the god Horus, and that's at a place called Edfu. And you see the entire story of the crucified Savior there on the walls and in the paintings and the ceilings and so forth. So what I'm saying to you, everything I'm going to say to you today, not only can you read them in books, but you can go to Egypt, to Ethiopia, to Nubia, and see in the ancient temples just what's there. And the question is, don't the Europeans, don't the whites know this? The vast majority do not know. But there are those in their universities and their high places, including Rome, who knows everything of what I'm speaking about today. But they have to suppress their own whites, much less those that they have enslaved. And so it is that even you have been dealt, dealing with what I'm talking about for the longest of while. You don't have to take a trip to Egypt to see what I'm telling. Just take one dollar out of your pocket. I did not interfere with your dollar bill. Take it out. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to ask you for it. <laughs> this is not the type of church that will ask you for it just because you got one. But if you look on the green side of your American dollar bill, you see the story I've just been speaking about. And the question is, how did it get there? You see the ever seen eye of Horus, otherwise known as the Ujet, U-D-J-E-T. And then you see around it the symbol of Amen-Ra. You say at the end of each prayer, Amen. Right. And somebody told you some lie that it means so be it. It never meant so be it and it still doesn't mean so be it. Right. Amen was the god of the north in Egypt. Ra, symbolized by the sun, was the god in the south. And when Egypt unified herself, they combined the god of the north and the god of the south into the one and thus Amen-Ra. A-M-E-N hyphen R-A. And the house of fire, or pyramid, the Greek word, P-Y-R-M-I-D, two words. Fire, meaning fire or house, and mid, meaning the house. It is in this context, then, that the early people in Africa, under the leadership of two Africans, one called Pantheus, P-A-N-T-A-E-U-S, and the other one called Boethius, B-O-E-T-I-U-S. Some 1983 years ago, having fell out with another branch of their own, decided to then reintroduce the concept of the Immaculate Conception, the Virgin Birth, the murder and resurrection of uh, uh, the Godhead which late was, um, Horus, which later became Jesus, and so forth. But have anyone ever told you? What we're speaking about is Christianity before Jesus. There are 16 crucified saviors, 16. Jesus being the 16th. The first being Horus, along the Nile, in the land from whence your ancestors came. When the Africans along the Nile there, started to deal with the concept of deity, God. There was no Greece yet. 
and there was no Adam and no Eve. Because Adam and Eve is a concept, an allegory that came from the Hebrews, otherwise called Jews. The first of the Hebrews, Abraham, otherwise originally called Abram, A-B-R-N. And let us just quickly put the little thing so we can get an understanding of what we're talking about at this point. There so that we certainly wouldn't uh, have no misconception of what this whole thing is. This is the type Tigris, and this is the Euphrates. This is the Red Sea. This is the Indian Ocean, or Indian Ocean. This is the world's largest island, the island of Cuba. Now, they later called Merida and Madagascar, and now Madagascar Republic. This will be um, the Iberian Peninsula here. This will be Italy, the Italian Peninsula. This will be the Greek Peninsula here, and that will be Turkey and so forth. Here is where Asia and Africa joins. Before there was a Swiss Canal here, this will be the Nile Valley, the Delta. This will be the S-turn that the African engineers put in there to stop the inundation period. That will be Mwanza um, Nyanza, which the British call Lake, Cat Lake uh, Victoria. There has never been a Victoria Lake in Africa. Victoria is in England. If there's any Victoria Lake, it's in England. <laughs> Now that is, this is the Great Sea, later called the Mediterranean today. And this is the Ethiopian Ocean today called the Atlantic Ocean. Now I need to put this just for the sake of identification. Here is Mecca and here is Medina. Because later in my conversation this will take place. Modern Cairo is about here, but Cairo is not an ancient city. I'm just putting it for the sake of uh, demarcation. Here are the pyramid fields. The pyramids of Giza are right here. And the pyramids of Darfur and all of them, there are 62 pyramids. All of them, all of the major structure on the West Bank. Of course, if we took a, a map, this will be north, this south, east, west. Of course, when I speak of Upper Egypt, Unlike there, Upper Egypt is in the south. In this part of Africa, when you say I'm go going down, you're going north, rather than in the United States when you say going down south. Up there you say I'm going down north because the land is higher. And when we speak of Upper Egypt, we're speaking about the, in terms of the contour of the land. I wanted to give you this. Down here, the first cataract, and this map is, let's bring it a little bit up here, a little more. And this will be the pyramid field. Mind you, there are 62 pyramids in Egypt. The ones that people know most are those at uh, Giza, and then the other at Saqqara, and over here. Now, we go back. They said, we came from the beginning of the Nile, Blue Nile, White Nile, where God happy, H-A-P-I, dwell at the foothill of the mountain of the moon. There are two mountains of the moon in Africa, one here, Right here, mountain of the moon. Otherwise, mountain of the moon means Kilimanjaro, means same word. Then there's another mountain of the moon over here, Renzori in Uganda. There are two, two mountains in Africa with the same name. They said then that they came from Central, Af Central East Africa for the simple reason, here will be your equatorial line, zero plus or minus zero. This is the Persian Gulf, by the way. And it's the Arabian Peninsula, it used to be the peninsula of the, 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 the Sabians. And of course, this is Mount Sinai. Today, there's a, a canal cut here, but the time in which we are talking, there's no canal. That's so it's canal. This was in the 19th century. This is supposed to be the Mount of Horeb in the Sinai Peninsula. Sinai is still a part of Africa, again, up to January the 9th. I could tell by January 9th. I haven't been back since January 9th. I expect to go back January, uh, July the 30th. Uh, first to make certain that it hasn't gone any place <laughs> but nevertheless so that this is the continent called Africa Alkebiland, Africa, Ortega, Hesperia all kinds of different names it was called so that I hope that you would make it understandable this is the Greenwich line zero plus or minus zero okay so that we could have 
a good understanding. This is the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, today, Portugal will be here, Spain will be here, southern France will be here, so that you will have an idea of it. But, as I stated before, Abraham or Avram was not born, born until 1675 before the Christian era or BC. You cannot have an Adam and Eve before you have Abraham. Why? The Jews are the ones that introduced the concept of an Adam and Eve. You don't have any book older than your Bible, your Judeo-Christian Bible, whatever version. With the book of Genesis, no other people in the world ever mentioned. And the first Jew is Abraham. You don't have a single... His mama wasn't a Jew. His daddy wasn't a Jew. They said Abraham was the first of the Jews. Your own Bible says it. So then, anything about the beginning of the world must be something he thought of. He had no concept of it. In 1675, the Africans along the Nile were already in their 13th dynastic period. 13th dynasty. I'm not talking about the pre-dynastic period. Are we to say that the Africans here had no concept of religion before Abraham was born? When Abraham was born here, in the city of Ur in Chaldea, Ur in Chaldea, this Chaldea was already a colony of these Africans. These Africans calling themselves Elamites. E-L-A-M-I-T-E-S. So that even Abraham was born at a time when the Africans was controlling the state where he was born. I know that in the university you're learning all of this. I'm just, I'm just trying to refresh your memory. <laughs> now, when the book, furthermore, the book of Genesis isn't written when Abraham is born. It isn't written until 700 BC at the Sanhedrin when Jewish scribes decided, and they did not even write the book of Genesis as the first book. They wrote the book of Exodus as the first book. But it looks silly to say that people are running from a place and they're not born yet. So at the council of, at the council of Jamia, at the council of Jamia, they change Exodus and replace it with Genesis, the same thing they did with Luke and Matthew. Luke was the first book in the Christian Bible, but it looks silly talking about to a woman a child would be born in the first book and in the second book to a virgin, a child will be born. So they have to, have to switch these two too. They've been switching all over the place. But it's not being new. But what was the switching? The switching was to remove a certain people from here. A people called Africans. Your people and mine. And it came about in the year 325 AD. When I know a Roman emperor, Rome, right here, by the name of Constantine, you see, decided that Rome, which was warring, Rome, which had been scourging the earth, Rome, which had been raping anything female, Ro Rome, which had produced nothing but a scavenger nation that would go and take anything they could at the case of murder, was able to convince the early Christians, by the way, they had not taken on the name Christian until 212 at the Council of Antioch. Antioch is the first time people start calling themselves Christians. Jesus supposed to have been dead 212 years before the first Christian. Jesus himself was never a Christian. Because you can't be a follower of yourself. But it was not until that council that I know that you are taught that in your Sunday school. You taught very good things in your Sunday school. You must be, you gain 10% of your earnings, you should get some... <laughs> I mean, if I'm paying in the university, they're going to have to come up and do some good teaching. Now, you may find some people leaving, but you know how it is. It's kind of rough up here today. <laughs> but nothing lasts forever. They have screwed us up for years. And the time has come for us to at least remove ourselves from the type of slavery that we're in. You talk about, you're free. I heard you all talking about that the other day. I don't know what you're going to free, 
you're free with a shackle off your hand, off your foot, off your waist, but the one in your mind. That's right. That's the one I want you to get free of. That's right. Now, and this, in order to free yourself, you have to be able to be in a religion and free. You have to have a God that look like you. Everybody you meet got a God. Look in any white church and see if they got any God look like you. Now how come you got a God look like them? <laughs> and it's all because you said a nigga ain't All right. <laughs> you the one that been saying it, you said it this morning. No, you don't say a word like that on Sunday. You'll say it tomorrow. All right. <laughs> and within that statement, is because you have not been able to relieve yourself from your stained glass window. Michelangelo's cousin. Now, going back, since this is the first day of the birth of Abraham, the first Jew, and out of Judaism came Christianity, out of Christianity came Islam. That's why I put that. You're talking about tons of days. They tell you that the world is only 6,000 years old. If the world is only 6,000 years old, we subtract, we have to take 6,000 with 1,800, add that, subtract it from this to give us at what time the world began. No, we're 1980, I'm sorry, 1983, right? 7, 1, uh, 0, 1 from 5, 4. So you're telling me that the world, that Jesus, that the world started 4,117 years before the birth of Jesus the Christ? If that is so, then the, uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Papyrus of Annie preceded this by 3,000 years. The Africans along the Nile gave to the world the first known calendar and you can't have a calendar without astronomy. It is because of astronomy, the movement of the stars, the planets, the suns and so forth and the recording of them, you develop astronomy and the Africans in 10,000 BC in this story, Adam should really feel bad behind that. 10,000 B.C., more than 6,000 years before Adam at least, the Africans produced what is known as the stellar calendar, S-T-E-L-L-A-R, a calendar based upon the, star, the stars and so forth. And then we find that calendar in 4,100 B.C. as the solar calendar, speaking, you understand that. They understood this aspect of it. And out of all of this came the fundamental principles upon the society in which the Africans uh, developed and conducted. We have to then realize that in order for you to understand the development of the religion called Christianity, you must understand the source. First, we must know where Christianity started. The records show whether you are a Protestant, a Catholic, or what, that Christianity started here at a place called Alexandria with Pantheus and Boethius. That's in Africa, by the way. And that from there, it spread out. But we, what did Christianity come out of? Your Bible, we got uh, which one, which version? V-E-R, this is the key, S-I-O-N, a version. Let me just demonstrate a version to you. I am in love with two young ladies. You know, black women are so pretty, you've got to be confused which one to love. <laughs> like the man said, he knew, my father told me he knew something better than a black woman. So I knew they were so good, so I said, Daddy, what? And he said, two black women, son. <laughs> so, so I, you understand. But anyhow, a version is if I'm in love with two women and I want to give them present, but my bread, my money is short. You know how it is. So I gave one girl a mink coat made from mink pellets. I gave the other girl rabbit pellets dyed mink coat. One got a version of a coat, of a mink coat. The one with the rabbit cannot go in acid rain. <laughs> because the mink will run. But the one with the true mink could go in any rain. One got a version, and your Bible says in the second page, version, King James, Reims, Dewey, Gutenberg, Vulgate, these are words, there about 15,000 versions. <laughs> the sad part is that you don't have a version anymore. Not one of those versions is black version. Okay, you haven't used a black book. 
Yes, because if it is so, how come all the angels in your book white? How come all the prophets in your book white? In a black country. <laughs> but alright, let's keep going. And let us go on. As we say, this he is here, 1983 years ago. But this religion went across here. It went from Egypt to Lebos, now called Libya. From Lebos to Numidia. No, Numidia is now called uh, Mar Mar um, Tunisia. Then it went to Carthage, later called Carthage, today called Morocco. That's how it. Then it traveled down the Nile and went here, right here at the island of Phile, P-H-P-H-A-L-A-E, Phile, is where they established the first monastery, the first Christian monastery, right here. And this religion existed 134 years before it went this way. But it came into this land as the worship of what is called the Herculaneum worship of Isis. Because originally, it was the worship of an African woman. It will seem strange, it should seem to you, that the first worship that man worshipped was not a man, not a god, but a goddess. The goddess Hathor. H-A-T-H-O-R. H-A-T-H-O-R. Hathor. Symbolized as a cow with a sun disc between her horn, which the Jews adopted and called the golden calf. <coughs> the present Hindus adopted it and called it the sacred cow. When you go to Egypt right here and the western bank of the Nile, there is a temple at a place called Dendera, D-E-N-D-E-R-A-H, built in honor of goddess Hathor, and you will see 3,500 faces on each of the columns and our places of this African woman. And that's why they will have you go to Mecca and to Palestine and to, I mean, Jerusalem and to, to uh, Bethlehem, but never to Egypt, never to Ethiopia, never to, 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 to um, Nubia, to see the ancient tombs dug into the walls. I mean, when I say a tomb, this building is one less than a quarter the size of the average tomb. I'm not talking about an eight by five thing, where all the records are there. When you talk about this, the source of this, having come to um, um, uh, Judaism, but where did Judaism get its belief source? Good evening and welcome to the second part of For the People Forum One with Dr. Yosef Benyekinen. Dr. Benyekinen is a tenured professor at Cornell University. In this segment, the scholar continues his discussion of the African origins of Christianity. It will seem strange, it should seem to you, that the first worship that man worshipped was not a man, not a god, but a goddess. The goddess Hathor, H-A-T-H-O-R, H-A-T-H-O-R, Hathor, symbolized as a cow with a sun disc between her horns, which the Jews adopted and called the golden calf. The present Hindus adopted it and called it the sacred cow. When you go to Egypt right here, and the western bank of the Nile, there is a temple at a place called Dendera, D-E-N-D-E-R-A-H, built in honor of goddess Hathor, and you will see 3,500 faces on each of the columns and our places of this African woman. And that's why they will have you go to Mecca and to Palestine and to, I mean, Jerusalem and to, to uh, Bethlehem, but never to Egypt, never to Ethiopia. Never to, 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 to um, Nubia to see the ancient tombs dug into the walls. 
I mean, when I say a tomb, this building is one less than a quarter the size of the average tomb. I'm not talking about an eight by five thing, where all the records are there. When you talk about this, the source of this having come to um, um, uh, Judaism, but where did Judaism get its belief source? When Abraham supposed to have come from here with his 18 year old daughter at 80 years of age, obviously he didn't mess with that girl once. 80 years old, walking across the desert <laughs> with an 18 year old wife. I mean, let's be reasonable now. <laughs> but all right, if it's in the Bible, then it's right. But you forget who wrote the Bible. You say, <laughs> inspire men of God. I'm inspired by God too. <laughs> aren't, aren't you inspired by God when you need to go to the toilet and you don't get an inspiration? What happens? <laughs> they be doo doo all over the place so you better get an inspiration to go to the toilet or you don't go and you in trouble <laughs> an inspired man by God it's, 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 what does it mean? does it mean he tells the truth? then the Pope in Rome shouldn't use eraser <laughs> he's perfect you shouldn't er eraser nobody you know is inspired and all those writers had erasers or at least they had a piece of the shirt to wipe with but you let that word fool you so that anything anybody shoved down your throat, all they got to do is tell you, you're, they're a man of God. That's right. Or they're inspired by God. What more inspiration they got than your daddy or you? <laughs> you let them frighten you with that. That's right. There's nothing against religion. With all I'm going to say tonight, I'm a religious man. But I don't mean to be a foolish religious man. Oh, that's right. I don't mean for nobody to tell me that there's something wrong with my child the day it's born. I don't mean for anybody to tell me that when the story of Adam and Eve, bad, good, or indifferent, that sex is bad. If it is, how come you here? Then all of you bad. Any one in here isn't the result of sexual intercourse. If you don't understand that, I'll give you another word for it. <laughs> If in fact then that God made sex and it's the only way that a woman could get pregnant to have the baby or the result of sex even if they have artificial insemination then you saying that what God gave was bad and therefore that if a woman had a child and wasn't married that the child is a bastard illegitimate Jesus mother Mary wasn't married to the angel nor to Joseph you're not going around calling Jesus a bastard. And where in the Bible it says there was a city hall that you stopped and had a blood test, then went and get the license, and then get married. Your Bible said, and God made two people, a man and a woman, and sent them out to multiply. He didn't send them to do two times two equals four. Send them out to get sex and have babies. That's what he sent them to do. But you let some sucker come and tell you that the mere fact that your child is born is born in sin and therefore something is wrong with the child what's wrong with the child how else could the child have been born why would God curse the thing that God made and checked out Amen. you think that God made sex and didn't check it out Amen. would you make a car and never run it test run it <laughs> but no <laughs> you see but you don't say nothing about it because a man stand up or a woman and tell you, run a lot of things down on you, make you feel guilty, make you go in a mental institution for the things that God gave you to do. But the Africans didn't bring this. Along the Nile, when the Africans established the worship of Goddess Hathor, the first known deity, long before they worshipped Ptah, that was the first known male deity. The first known female deity was Hathor. And then there was another male, uh, fe a female deity by the name of Goddess Nut. Spelled like Nut, Nut. In this year, in most of the pyramids, I mean most of the temples and most of the uh, tombs that you see, especially at a place called today Luxor. The Greeks originally called it 
seed, but the indigenous Africans for the first time call it Wa'at, W-A apostrophe A-T. There on the ceilings of the tombs, you see the body of this woman, this African woman, with stars and moons and everything symbolizing the outer space, the heavens. And one side, her, her head comes down, and on the other side, the, the legs come down. And then you see the god Geb, G-E-B, Geb. And kneeling on one knee and holding her, listen to this, at the two columns of heaven. One hand on the vagina and the other on her breast. The two columns of heaven. That's where heaven was and that's where heaven still is. <laughs> the most ancient, the most ancient writing about the word heaven, the ancient Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian Africans call it Amenta. The opposite of that they call Abydos. In the Heretic writing. Mm. But then this was thousands of years. There was no Adam and Eve story yet. There was no Jew yet. There was of course no Greece yet. We don't have Greece. Doesn't come in history until 833 B.C. when Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. And Homer said that even the gods of Greece, the gods of Europe, the two first gods, Zeus and Apollo, came from Ethiopia. Go we'll read. You're in college. And I'm sure that you have to read the Iliad and the Odyssey. And you come up with your PhDs. And you were in your fraternities and your sororities. Mm. And you don't know none of this. And your Greeks, your Akabata, Bapadata, Lapadata, <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> and you know nothing about yourself. Your Greeks treat everything else. <laughs> but know nothing about yourself. You're proud of everybody who learned from you, but not of yourself. <laughs> Of course, this would be called racism soon. <laughs> Yet I haven't said that anybody inferior or superior, all I'm dealing with me. I have no time to deal with other folks to be racist because there's so much of me that I need to deal with that have been so long neglected that I don't have time. Man, I will be teaching them another 2,000 years and don't start yet. The point is, if you knew this, then you will not be kneeling in, sitting in, busting your child from West Hell to No Hell. Your child going to the white neighborhood, but never a white child coming to your neighborhood. Isn't that strange? You bust in to where? You prove that you're inferior. Because you bust your child to the white neighborhood, but never does the white people bust their child to your neighborhood. Uh -huh. And now you're begging for a day. Uh -huh. You're going to Washington to beg for a day to take off in honor of King. You see? <laughs> the Italians got a day for an Italian that got lost. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find him find here. Think he wants to go to the east, wound up over here. They got a day for that. <laughs> the Irish got a day. For a man that said kill some snakes, came all the way from Italy to kill snakes in Ireland. The Pole got a day for General Pulaski and so on. They took a day. They didn't beg a living soul for a day. They took the day. You got to be in your damn knee all the time begging. Take the day. <laughs> And if you're going to take the day, remember that a woman named Rosa Parks did it long before Martin Luther King Jr. was told by his mama. His mama, not a black woman, go down there and get yourself straight. I'll send you up there in Boston to get soft. Huh? A black woman. And then when you're taking the damn day, remember that 
Betty Shabazz doesn't feel the death of her husband no less than Coretta Scott King. Just remember that Malcolm, when he died, left six daughters. The last two, the twins, he didn't even know existed because Betty was going to surprise him and tell him she was pregnant. And he got killed before his birthday, but he got killed before it happened. So his last two, he didn't even know that his wife was pregnant. So when you're going to take a day, take one for Malcolm too. Yeah. Right. Take one for Garvey. Yeah. Take one for Garvey, take one for Du Bois. Take one for Nat Turner, Denmark, Vizi, Nat, uh, uh, um, Henry Island, Goddard, Sujeta Truth, and um, Harriet Tubman. Take one, David Walker. Please don't take none for Christmas Addicts. That shot in his rectum, defi de 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 defending his master. He was no hero. He is a, happened to be black. Happened to be black. Mm. They do nothing for black people. He didn't do anything for himself. <laughs> he got shot. So somebody had victory. But let's go on here. <laughs> Natana and Denmark Vizi understood Christianity. They took up arms to defend themselves as Jesus took up a stick and whipped some in the synagogue. All right. <laughs> yeah. This this European Jesus that you teach up on the wall. Then that was Jesus. Man, ain't nobody from this part of the world coming here with the synagogue. <laughs> That's going to act like that and tell you to be moderate. <laughs> but then again, there's some people with special interests, and their interests may not be necessarily your interests. Right. That's right. There was a thing that said that those who call Lord, 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 Father, but then, Simon Peter, you can be the first guy. Hallowing all the days my name, but who going to betray me? That was, uh, I hope that be a little warning. But all along the Nile here, when Abraham was born, what did the Jews have nothing? Goat, sheep herder. They came in here and they met what? They met cities. They met an educational system here called the mystery system. They met medical practice, science, law, engineering. There is no Greece yet, there is no Rome. There is no Europe in history. When these Africans under Sesostris III changed the flow of this river this way to stop the inundation period. And now you're talking about you are, you are afraid of mathematics and science, that black people don't do well in mathematics and sciences only when we're singing. But even that we don't do anymore. We don't sing the African spirituals which we misname the Negro spirituals. We sing songs from Wales and Scotland. One of the songs that get me so damn sick is the other day I went in the church and hear black people singing, Make me whiter than snow, oh Lord! <laughs> I'm washed in the blood. <laughs> God, and it's a sad thing for black people to think that they were washed in red blood, black as they are, and then become white as snow. Sickness. Gotta be sick. And you see nothing wrong with singing that song. And singing it loud, very loud to the top of your voice. <laughs> and then you got an aria. The big, the, day, the big song for the day. Sisters going there belching out. Black people sitting down can't find a single song by a single black person to sing. Wedding going on. Your most precious daughter is coming down the aisle with with a, with a most precious young man. And you can't find a song by a black person to sing at a black wedding in a black community with a black minister, a black congregation. What's wrong with you? That's right. But you mad with me for telling you. Come on, sir. Hmm? And then we got to go back. When the Africans hear wrote the negative confessions. Forty-two laws called negative, N-E-G-A-T-I-V-E confessions. C-O-N-F, 
S-E-S-S-I-O-N-S. I-O-N-S. Listen to some of them. By the way, they have were revised in 4100 B.C. I have not killed man nor woman. I have not made light thy bushel. I have not spoken ill of my mother or my father. Song familiar to you? I think you call them the Ten Commandments. And you found them in the book of Exodus. There were no Exodus yet. When the Africans go in the tomb of Ramesses the third, and you will see them, all of them, on the left hand side as you go on down. Plus other places. Go look in, they may be here, but a little belt may have one. Look in the rear section of the book of the coming forth by day and by night, which they call the book of the dead, and you see it there in a section called the Osirian drama. O-S-I-R-I-A-N drama. In honor of God Osiris. And you see where Moses got the Ten Commandments. Not from Mount Sinai, Mount of Harib. He got it from here, where he went to school. He got 42, not 10. Moses the African, here, was born here, in the city of Sokot, your Bible says. How in the world, if you were born right here, in Columbia, South Carolina, is it possible for you to go to kindergarten, from kindergarten to college, post right, post, your, your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate, your post doctorate, and never heard of the United States Constitution? Is it possible for Moses to have been born here and for 80 years went to the school system, became an officer of the government, and never heard of the basic fundamental laws of the society, the negative confession? No. But how come you don't hear it from the pulpit? That's right. How come nobody from the pulpit tell you, let's go to the Holy Land? Here it is. 11.3 million square miles of Holy Land. The continent of Africa. Because you had too many Tarzan and Jane. Too many Jeffersons and whatnot. You see? But then if you deal with this, you deal with your own heritage. You forget that the present Pope in Rome is going back to Poland to worship at the feet. This is his own words. And it's so, it must be good because white man said it. <laughs> he said, I am going back to what? Worship at the feet of the black Madonna yeah. and child. Where is the black Madonna and child? There she is sitting in the audience. There she is. Any black woman out there with a child is a black Madonna. Yeah. But no, how could it be a black Madonna when you beat her like a drum? You walk off and desert her with her baby child. Hmm? You desert her when you get a dollar as soon as you could throw a basketball knee high to a grasshopper and run across the airport at Hertz with a suitcase and call yourself Herschel Walker. You can't find her no more. When you garrote up behind the trees and in the backyards and in the alleys, she's a good black Madonna, but as soon as you get a buck or a name or you hit the numbers, then you can't get her because you want somebody commensurate with your dignity on stalkers. <laughs> But I ask any one of you mothers out there, what is it about the story of Mary and Jesus that you didn't have with your child? Didn't Mary deliver her child with pain? And you say that God cursed Eve and the curse was she had to bear pain when she gave birth for her sin. What was the sin? She ate of the forbidden fruit. Didn't Eve have pain when she gave birth to Jesus according to your story? What sin she committed? She was the mother of God. The Roman Catholic says, Holy Mary, mother of God, blessed are the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. But let us go further then. If we are going to take that, what you are saying. Didn't Mary breastfeed her child? Of course you don't do that no more. It may um, mess up your shape. 
<laughs> your man nurses and, nurses and you don't mess up you say he got big jaw bone your little child got gristle and that mess up your but the man don't mess it up <laughs> contradicting values didn't Mary clean her little boy when he messed himself one time at the university the other day I was speaking to a young lady who was ultra ultra religious and I said, well, Jesus messed himself, his mother must have. She said, stop! I said, what happened? She said, Jesus never <laughs> messed himself. I said, well, when he came out of Mary, he knew how to change his own diaper. <laughs> and even if in order to change the diaper, something must have happened. Did he know to pull on his clothes the day he was born and go his diapers and go to the bathroom and defecate? She said, well, Jesus didn't do such things. I said, well, Last time you said Jesus was drinking some wine at the wedding, right? He drank water, he had a supper, and all that. Then he must have gone to the bathroom. Oh, since there were no bathroom in the days, the outhouse, and if there were no outhouse, he'd be in the yard or someplace. <laughs> but they couldn't see Jesus. They jam up as soon as he said Jesus, or oh, some black folks get all jammed up. Can't think no more, can't reason. That's why anybody could do what they want to you because they can, as soon as they say God, they can pull the wool over your eyes and do you in. If somebody take 10%, if you give 10%, they're not wrong but demand something for your 10%. Amen. You don't want somebody to read a book for 10%, take 1% of the first 10% and buy a book and read it. Amen. He must do something more than just tell you what God said because you don't know what about what God said. No more than you do. He had no conversation with God that you didn't have. The concept of God, the deity, man when he came here, man when she came here, male or female, wanting to know from whence he or she came beyond mother and father. And since no one could tell, then wanted to know for the purpose of being here. And then where do I go after here? Man then. Man's own mentality, man's own mind, man's own thinking, man's own brain, man's own heaven devise answers. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but then understand what it is. No man came down from any superman, no anything like that, and brought a rope in a damn thing. This is the ideas of men, both male and female. And until we understand these things, and until we understand the source from it, when it came down the Nile, and these African geniuses who conceived this, wrote their books. When Solomon, before Solomon plagiarized, before he stole the Proverbs from the Pharaoh Amenyot. A-M-E-N hyphen E-M hyphen E-O-P-E. Who died a thousand years before Solomon was born and taught all of those so-called Proverbs that Solomon and the other Jews stole. Before Moses, the myth that Moses gave to the world monotheism, an African by the name of Amen Hotep the Fort. Amen Hotep Four. Otherwise called Akhenaten, who died more than 49 years before the birth of Moses, spoke about a one and only true God named Aten, A-T-E-N. The man that got rid of his army in non-violence. A man who got rid of his army because he didn't believe in violence. Dr. King should not have gone to Mohandas Karancham Gandhi in India. Gandhi himself, they should have read it. And the picture doesn't tell it. Spoke of where he got the idea of a method of nonviolence as a strategy by reading the works of Akhenaten. But they couldn't put a picture of Akhenaten because too dark, too black. Even you won't go to it. Because you see, when you get a chance to make a film, the other day in the 60s, what you made? Badass sweet back. <laughs> Showing a black woman with her crutch wide open and, and, and the cameraman with a telephoto lens deep down in that woman. That's the way you treat the black woman. When you got a chance to make a film, made her a prostitute and everybody in the film were prostitutes. Then you made another film, Cleopatra Jones. And you had a machine gun inserted to the woman's vagina shooting bullets. 
That's how you show your black woman. There's no film on Cleopatra. There's no film. And on Zinger, there's no film. And Harriet Tubman or Rosa Parks. No film. And Makeda, which you call the Queen of Sheba. No film. And Hatshepsut. Oh, those names you don't know all, right? But you know all the white names. You know Betsy Ross. And all the Rosses. You know, you get to I mean. Virginia Deer. And all the little dairies. Huh? But it's, and you never ask. Huh? You never ask the question, how come? All people take their race from their mothers. So I hate to disappoint you, brothers. But you know, like the old saying, I am mama's baby. I am daddy's baby. There's no doubt about who my mommy is. She can't hide that one. To hide it, she had to get rid of me. As long as she let me come, everybody know. That's mama. And so we inherit from our mamas. But you see, we didn't used to beat them yet. See, nobody had told us that she's ugly. Nobody had told us that her natural sweet hair. Lord, it feels so good to run your hair into one of them woolly hair that them sisters got. Sister, keep, keep, if you got a woolly hair, keep it. Don't you put no egg and champagne and beer and Coco Rico and all that kind of stuff and then malt liquor, dye, this thing and Miss clear all. And, but I know you're doing it, sis. Don't get mad with me now. I know you're doing it. You're doing it because that damn fool don't know how good looking you are without you doing that. He wants you to look European as much as possible and you're doing it. You know what? Tell the sucker if he don't want you the way he is, get lost. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the third and final part of For the People Forum One with Dr. Yosef Benyekinen of Cornell University. In this final segment, the scholar continues his discussion of the African origins of Christianity and fields questions from the audience. No, religion must relate. I am speaking religion. I haven't stopped from it all day. Plain it has none to do with religion. That's a personal thing. You and your concept of a maker. Religion must be. Religion is the deification of a culture. And a people who cherish their culture soon find that culture becoming a religion. A God of love must love me and then I will love that God. My God cannot be helping the enemy. And then I love that God. It is inconsistent with human dignity and reasoning that a God that constantly for 400 years helps the enemy could be my God. I must have a God that helps me. And I will love that God. Otherwise, you're not asking me to be real and to be human since God is the concept of man. What we are talking about as I boil down for question and answer period, uh, which we will have later, very good, is to just give you a touch into the concept of religion. And since I spoke of Judaism and Christianity, let me just remind those of you who I did not speak about Islam. It was Hatshad Kubad ibn Rabad, otherwise called Bilal, who started the first part of the Quran. It was Muhammad ibn Abdullah himself who stated that his grandmother, his mother's mother, came from Ethiopia. It was he himself who sent to Ethiopia to the emperor to send him help when he was being chased out of Medina, I mean Mecca. When in Mecca, they were worshipping the goddess Alat, A-L apostrophe L-A-T, Alat and Aluhuza, A-L apostrophe L-A-T, Alat and Alhuza, A-L apostrophe A-H-O-U-S-A. Allah became Allah. And the most important symbol of Islam is still the Kaaba, a black stone, a meter from Ethiopia. Most of the writers of early Islam have been come from Ethiopia, such as al Sinin, Al-Aziz and others. But when they show the picture of Muhammad, done by an Arab, they only show Bilal as a slave. They didn't show 
that slave, but what kind of a slave? That his slavery was as a lawyer because he, had, he was, when he went to, to, to Mecca as ambassador for the Ethiopian government, they then held him there and enslaved him over political risk. Nothing said, nothing said when they came here. That was the, 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 the beginning of Islam was here with Muhammad ibn Abdullah in 622 AD, who is also known as the year one of the Hejira. The Hejira means the year Muhammad ibn Abdullah fled Mecca with Abu, Abu Bakr, uh, Umar the Great, Hassad Kubat ibn Rabad, Bilal, himself and others, the other followers. And it was 639 that they came here as conquerors with what is called the Jihads. J I H A D S or Holy Wars. Everybody using the Africans for the foundation of their religion and concepts. We are even told that Benny Goodman is the king of swing. I guess Duke Ellington and Pat's well and <laughs> uh, for some of you young people you may not know these names. But your mom, your grandparents should be able to tell you them. Hmm? Conk Basie and Lionel Hampton and all these. One brother just died about two years ago, two days or three days ago, on the West Coast, Port Isle Hines and others. I guess the name of the emperors. If, Dukele, if, if Benny Goodman is the king, they're the emperors. Huh? But then, as I said again, the blues and things you look down at. But you forget that your gospel music came out that blues and that jazz. Go look at Mr. Dorsey. Ask old man Dorsey, who played in a jazz band and went into the church, the church that rejected that form of music because it didn't come from Europe. The same gospel that you wouldn't give up today was rejected because it was introduced by a black man by the name of Dorsey. There's a very famous song that you sing at funerals by Dorsey. Anybody? Nobody? That's your exam. Almost every black Christian funeral that song is sung. And it's by Dorsey, the man that brought and made the blue, the uh, gospel music in your church. Oh yes, you know who did the Star Spangled Banner though. And you feel bad if Aretha Franklin jazz it. But you don't worry about Kate Smith bugging it up. <laughs> Again, and it comes from a deep sense of what we don't get here on Sundays. Sundays when we come, when this black woman comes with her child and her man, she doesn't want to hear nobody cursing her out. She doesn't need anyone after catching hell all week long from this man who has been doing it from 1506. In the Western Hemisphere, starting in Haiti with Santo Domingo, Haiti and Santo Domingo then called Hispaniola. When the Pope in Rome, the Roman Catholic Pope Martin V and Bartolomeo de las Casas started the slave trade to the West in 15. And an island now called Hispaniola, shared by Haiti and Santo Domingo. How many churches said when the Haitians were dying on the beach there in Florida? How many ministers say, let us rise up? But no, you're rising up for the Koreans and the Vietnamese. Not realizing that the first place they brought you, the boats did not come straight from Africa here. Neither there. We were in, we were in Hispaniola. We were in Iberian Peninsula from 711. 711 AD to 1485 before we lost power. We had even built, gave Europe its first university, the University of Salamanca in Spain. We created the first educational system. It is there. After we lost power, they took the first 4,000 of us and carried us to the island of Española. 1506. It was not until 1619 or 20 that the first group of us came from Barbados. Barbados to Virginia. And we came as professionals. Architects, 
engineers, lawyer and two doctors and so forth. I do not know, in closing, what is it you feel sad about? With a history like this behind you, how could you be sad? But I know, you gotta be sad. She didn't know it. And I've just touched the first line of the first sentence of a billion sentences to talk about you. To talk about how great you are. You say, well, if I'm so great, how come I get it like this? Gunpowder, it had nothing to do with Christianity. They said that the Africans ate the Christians, missionaries. Oh, what a shame we did not. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is never too late. <laughs> the man who mistreated us knew what he was doing. Why should we now say, well, after all, he's a child of God. Isn't it strange that when somebody dies, all of a sudden they become good? Beat a woman all day of his life, kick her, starve her, and when, she die, when he dies, instead of she's dead. God, I'm so glad you killed him. I wish I had the chance. The minister tell her to say, well, after all, he's God's child. Don't you beat your bad child? Or have you got this so modern that you let the child knock the hell out of you and don't want to hurt his ego? Not my children. My children get a whipping, not just a beating, a whipping. <laughs> And their ego is damaged because I want it damaged. I beat them to hurt the ego. So that when he get 18, he doesn't have an idea of messing with me because he knows it ain't beaten then. He's going to die. If he raise a hand, any animal chastises its young, then why not us? Yes, we cannot go there voting for Wallace. He doesn't suddenly get good. Because somebody shot him in his back. But there you are. He's reformed. He got good. Lester Maddox got good too. You sold up for a poke chop. Oh, when are we going to learn? But one day, like I say, nothing lasts forever. They didn't believe that the day will ever come when I will be able to get up and front my people or anybody else and speak like this to each other. They didn't believe the day would ever come that we would again read. They didn't know that we would take up the Bible which we originally started. They didn't know that the day will come when we did not have a Bible with just three pages that says, Slave, obey your master, render unto Caesar that which is of the Caesar, and unto the Lord that which is of the Lord. Can you imagine Jesus saying to people, be satisfied with slavery? Now, you know, the guy that put that in there had nothing to do with Jesus. No way in the world. A man who violated every rule that he didn't like that was opposing the people. A man who stick his hand around a woman's neck. Yeah, Jesus put his hand around the sister's neck and said, Hey, what's wrong, baby? You said, Jesus didn't say that. They said, Jesus spoke in the language of the people. What is the language of us? We're not English. He said, Hey, hey baby, what's happening? And he suck a two kids. Jesus had to kiss her as good as her sister Lou. He took away even the sex from Jesus. Uh -huh. Can't have no sex. Why? Because you stick about sex. Because sex means something bad to you. So Jesus had to have no sex. Jesus gonna make all kind of women, make all kind of men, but never check out sex because you sick about sex. Because your sick little mind makes sex bad. Nothing wrong with sex is wrong with you. If you go around making your body a garbage fail and he go around start to put it in like a cigarette butt. Then naturally sex is bad and Jesus couldn't have had it. But if sex was good because your mind treated good, then Jesus could have had it. But you couldn't have Jesus with sex because with your sick little perverted mind, it was of the devil. But God took all the time to make a male reproductive organ, a female reproductive organ, which is better than any switch, this watch intricate with all the ramifications of reproduction sperms and ovaries, and then God curses 
we go to all that trouble? Go to a gynecologist and ask him the intricacy of a woman's reproductive organs. Go and ask him why, with the mistreatment of brutal men, she has to come there all the time for treatment because of the delicateness of this African woman. And then you take her body and say that she is something less than honorable solely because you have a sick opinion about what sex is. You don't come to any church and let any man stand up here and curse you. If he can't tell you great things and make you feel good, get another place to go to. Let him know, I will not pay you to curse me. I will not get up in front of the congregation and testify that I'm a prostitute because I got pregnant and wasn't married. He says, no, I have a child like anybody else's child. And for you women that put your daughter out the house because your daughter was pregnant and wasn't married at the time when she needs you most. <laughs> you let some man stay up here and tell you to throw your daughter out of the house. Make your daughter get up in front of a congregation and say when she lay in bed, when she didn't, what place she laid in bed, taking it off her mind, telling her own damn business to the general public and call it. Clean in your mind, that's a sick man. He just so perverted he wants to know how she had sex. <laughs> no, my brothers and my sisters, we have gone through enough agony to be agonizing ourselves. We are a good people. We have to have been to do the things we do. We have been, we have been carried our our uh, holocaust is not with an our holocaust doesn't end with a T it ends with an S holocaust 50 million of us in the southern tip of Africa murdered because we were what we were over 25 million of us in what was then called Congo countless million more elsewhere 15 million of us across the Atlantic in what they call the triangular trade as our women took their newborn and threw them to the sharks which was they thought was a better life. A mother taking her son as she gave birth as she gave birth and only sometimes hear the child never seen it because it was already contracted for. And we are asked to forgive this even to forget it. And we pray and kneel and say we will never touch a hair in the manner of a man who did that to our mothers, our daughters, our sisters. That's right. What kind of men are we? That's right. To stay there and see our women being so molested and mistreated and kneel and pray and ask, would you think Jesus would have stood there and let a man do that to Mary? But no. You don't believe in violence. Everybody else does. But you don't. Ask any woman who gives birth to a child if it wasn't violent. Even birth starts violently. And death is. Stop your heart for a moment and see how it feels. It's violent. I say these things in the name of the father. That's the men and the mother. That's the woman and the child, the Holy Trinity, Daddy, Mama, and me. Thank you. First of all, I'm glad to have you here. I think you're a great inspiration to us all. My name is Yusef Hamid. I'm from Colombia. Uh, the question that I had, which will clear up something in mind and my mind and possibly cut the mind of others, you mentioned earlier that uh, these ideas of man's understanding deities are the, uh, are the ideas of man. Uh, my question is, how does that tie in with the Creator? What, what is your, how do you assess the Creator in connection with the ideas of man? If he felt a need to, to uh, look for a higher deity, uh, is there a Creator in your sense? Or is it just in man? There is. If you, when you say there is a creator using the Judeo-Christian Islamic context, you are speaking about a consciousness 
and unfortunately in the West it is placed as a him or he. Everything that I have seen thus far, including the egg, the egg comes from a hen, so when the nonsense come about which came first, the hen or the egg, if somebody show me an egg laying a hen, then I'll ask the question. But why is the creator, if there's such, a masculine gender rather than a feminine gender when in fact everything we see being born comes from the feminine quality. Yes, a creator, if you are saying that which everything is a part of a cosmetic or cosmo, that everything is interrelated to the other, yes, in that term. But to say that it is a man or a masculine, no, not for me. I don't know anyone who knows what is the what is the ultimate causation of things that exist? Thus, when, thus, if I say, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Thus, when I, if I pay recognition to that which is responsible for me beyond my mother and father, which is not belief. My mother and father is are factual because although I was there when I was born, I was not conscious to the state to if I did understand it to remember it five years later. However, I had the opportunity several times to see my own woman give birth to children. And I, I saw it, uh, having studied many phases of medicine, because as an Egyptologist, one of the phases we must study is of, uh, the beginning of medicine. I understand the, how the process of um, um, regeneration starts. And I understand the evolutionary process which it goes through, and therefore birth and death. But in understanding all of that, when it comes to origin, it is still a question because I don't know. And I know who, no one who knows the origin, neither anyone who knows the ultimate causation or death. It is a belief concept by man. Okay, and my next question is, has, has to do with, uh, if I may ask it, it has to do with with leadership today in America. Well, uh, how do you see uh, the leadership in America coming together there? There are many fronts in terms of uh, black leadership, and uh, that's what I'm speaking about. I cannot make the decision for every African American, but I can say that I will say that you do nothing sitting down waiting. Uh, I will say that don't sit there praying and asking for things to happen. Because even Jesus, they said, on, on others, and Muhammad ibn Abdullah and others, were not seen just kneeling down praying. None of the great prophets of fast, and none that I know of today sit and wait for things to happen. Even the Judeo-Christian said, I will help those who help themselves. So that I'm saying that I will not be presumptuous enough to decide for you what course you must take, but you, I'll say this much, you've got to take a course. You got to do something to relieve yourself of the conditions that exist. Now, everyone would like people to follow the way that they approach it, naturally. It's a human tendency. And I would say, in that context, uh, I would be glad if people will see that all people in America, and it's never a melting pot, look back to the land of their nativity, the land of their origin, using origin in the anthropological sense. And that we have to see that the struggle in Africa is no different than the struggle here. We are the same people. And until we understand that the struggle in Haiti, the struggle in Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, Grenada, Nigeria, Ghana, you know, is the struggle in Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Harlem, New York. You get what I'm saying? What? Yes. We, anything happened to us internationally, universally, happened to one, it happened to all. And until we start to get that appreciation for each other, then I think we are not going to lose, uh, remove the bond. So that anything that works towards the universality of African people and their struggle will help to break that bond. I want to ask the question for a very long time and it's been slipping my mind in all of our different conversations. So I guess this is a great time to ask for those who would like to know also. You was at the funeral of El Hajj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, and I just want to know, what was the intensity or what was the intenseness of such a gathering and such an occasion of that in Harlem in uh, 1965. I was the one of the advisors to 
what we were then said in those days, Malcolm X. I was what at the United Nations as the chief in charge of the East African desk. And I was asked by a number of people to give advice to Malcolm, who had by that time broken from the Honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad. And I volunteered to give advice, and I'm one of those who told him he had to go to Mecca to see that, in fact, Islam has all kinds of different people in it. Uh, I did other things in international law in helping him, since law is one of my disciplines. And in Harlem, you've got to remember that Malcolm was known prior to his, uh, his encounter with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He was known in the streets of Harlem as well as he was known after he came back from the prison in Atlanta. And so that he was, and, and uh, his charisma uh, made him a most popular person in the Harlems of the United States and the Harlem, New York in particular. I think where his strength and st uh, 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 his, his songboard was in Temple Number 7 at 116th Street, 100 West, 116th Street. So the whole, the, the, the death of Malcolm electrified Harlem like nothing else that I've seen. And I've been coming to Harlem back and forth since 1938. No one can, in words, place the incident of that ill-fated day and tell you to e enough make you feel mentally what happened. What happened? And people in Harlem, some were shocked. Some were crying without, without control. Some were are physically doing things to themselves in disgust and uh, things like that. Uh, two, there was another such thing almost like that, the King Affair also struck people very uh, ups, uh, in that kind of context. But in the terms of Malcolm, you see, Malcolm was with the common man. Malcolm was the epitome of what many black women wanted a man to be. I think Arthur Davis said it best in his eulogy when he said, when he spoke of the shining black prince. Malcolm had made the black woman even cross line, whether she was the follower of king or not. Realized that it was a man at least saying, I will stand up for my woman regardless. And it seems as if the powers that be made him lucky to have six such women, six daughters. As case, none of which he uh, lived to, but the fate, you know, it, things are, things happen ironically. You realize that Malcolm's old, oldest daughter at Atala, my very close daughter in a sense, and King's daughter have a company together, it's ironic. Uh, what would have happened if Malcolm and King, or Garvey and Du Bois, or, du or Booker T. Washington and Du Bois, would have uh, put away their personal feelings about each other? I would not probably be here speaking to you, because probably our problem might have been solved one way or the other. Generally, when I go to lecture in a regular place, and it's mostly black audience. I always ask the brother to look next to the sister next to him and say, with a straight face, don't close your eyes, I love you. To that sister, you don't know her from Adam, but just watch her dead in the eye, she watch you dead in the eye, and say, I love you. Without meaning to go to bed with her, for him. We haven't told each other that in a long, long time. If it's, it got to the point that if a sister sees me, in a dark night at one end of the corner, and she's at the other end, she go in another corner, another street, to avoid me. It should be that when she see me, she glad. She saw a brother, who she know gonna protect her. She should run, come to me. <laughs> but nobody's teaching that, everybody's teaching that she individually, I individually should prepare to go to heaven. But nobody's saying I should prepare so that she could come and feel safe in my company. 
that I, she should feel free that if she's going something say, hey Ben, give me a ride up the street. That I'm going to give her a ride up the street. Don't even ask for a name if necessary without asking her to get in her pants. This is the kind of thing I think that the church and thing need to emphasize and the synagogue and the mosque is our respect to each other rather than, and then we'll be stop raping each other and knocking out each other and, and breaking each other's houses and what not and, and wearing all the crosses and all the, 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 the crescents and or the religious symbols because we are only interested in going to heaven. Another thing in the teaching is if I steal your money, I should ask God for forgiveness but don't give you back a dime. <laughs> I didn't steal God's money, I stole your money. The minister should say, give the man back his money plus the interest.